Hey YouTube, Keenan for 7 aka Wolfkin here, and I am here with a reviewing series. Um, shit, I forgot the game. <laughs> Anyways, um, I have no name for this reviewing series yet. If you have a name that you would like me to use, please leave a comment below. If you hear, uh, screaming and stuff in the background, that's because, uh, my nephew and my dad are playing Grand Theft Auto. So anyways, what do we got to say? Anyways, I am going to be talking about a game that was hyped up, um, one of the most anticipated games of 2011, and a game that will be fighting for Game of the Year at the Spike VGA Awards. Game by Naughty Dog, if you haven't just figured out what it was now, it is Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception. Now, um, what can I say about Uncharted 3? We all know that the Uncharted series features a character named Nathan Drake, and he's supposed to be the uh, descendant of Sir Francis Drake, which we all know in real time, um, Sir Francis Drake did not have any heirs. So, Naughty Dog came up with the idea of what if, what if Sir Francis Drake had an heir, and this is where the character Nathan Drake comes into play. Anyways, the story of Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception, you play as the character Nathan Drake with his friend Sully, and you get ready to make this exchange for his ring necklace. I don't have it on me right now, but um, I can show you later. But um, basically you make this exchange for the ring necklace, only to lure out um, this person named Kate Marlowe. What happens though is that um, there's some interesting facts. When you find out when... Drake was a kid. You get to play as mini Drake or teenage Drake. What you find out is that um, Drake took about six months to sail across the Indies, right? But Drake made out that that's not that's not possible because if he took six months to sail when it should have only took him a month, what was Drake hiding? What was Sir Francis Drake hiding? So that's what the adventure holds. Like you try to uncover. Drake's secret. You try to uncover what he found in uh, Arabia, which is where you find where he goes. And you're looking for this place called um, the Aram of Iram. You know, Aram of the Pillars, uh, the Atlantis of the Sea, uh, of the Sands, I mean. You know, stuff like that. And it's all the way in the middle of the... Uh, I forgot what the desert was called, but it's out there. So basically, the reason why the case differs is because I got the uh, special edition. So, um, two minutes in. Alright, um, let's talk about the story. As I said about the story, the story follows Nathan Drake. I feel like the story was really good in Uncharted 3. It branched out and opened up more possibilities to Sir Francis Drake. As it was, this was a true history fact that it took Sir Francis Drake six months to, uh, travel from one to the other side of the Indies. Another interest get me? And they decided to elaborate on that. What if the Aram of the Pillars? I like that fact that they tried to bring in real history and real stuff. Because also, another person that was looking for the Aram of the Pillars was T.E. Lawrence, or also known as Lawrence of Arabia. So, um, here you go. You have Sir Francis Drake and Lawrence of Arabia all looking to, uh, find a realm of the pillars. So, um, what do we find? Well, you find out later in the story what do we find. But, throughout the storyline, you notice that Drake has been making some really stupid moves and he's been getting reckless. Which is what affects him in most of the story. His recklessness can is almost costed him his life on many occasions in this storyline as well. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but you'll find out on your own what happens like at certain parts of the game. I'll let you find out. Story-wise, this is a good game. But, um, I have to say this straight up. The story didn't feel as good as the Uncharted 2. Uncharted 2, I felt like it had a better storyline than in Uncharted 3. And this is just me being honest. I think a lot of people can agree with me that the storyline in Uncharted 2 is better compared to Uncharted 3. But, um, this is honest opinions and stuff like that. Okay, second, let's talk about the, uh, gameplay. I gotta admit that the gameplay in both Uncharted 1 and 2 felt a little clunky at times, if not, uh, 
broken at certain moments because at certain moments you feel like some you could do this but then it doesn't happen because something else happened at the at the same moment and this could be annoying i feel like in uncharted 3 they fixed a lot of these issues with the clunky controls and made things a little bit more responsive is the controls responsive all the time absolutely not there's still some clunky issues with the climbing systems but they don't like put as many uh, bad obstacles in your way so you don't have to be like quick on the controls be like oh no I'm about to fall click click like that like they at least give you like a few seconds to think of your next move and then being like uh oh you only got a second to think oh too late you're dead like it doesn't feel as cheap in this game like it doesn't feel so cheap when you're doing the uh, parkouring and stuff like that it doesn't feel cheap at all two the the, the 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 shooting system feels a lot more improved. Now you can aim you can aim now with certain guns, like with rifles, you can aim down sights. I mean that was done in Uncharted 2 as well, but I feel like it's a little better in Uncharted 3. Certain weapons you can aim down the sights, like even if they don't have a uh, a scope, you can still aim like a little further and they try to balance out each gun. So um each gun no gun is overpowered, which is good. The only guns that I would say are overpowered is more or less the shotguns, but most shotguns are powerful to begin with anyways, so that's not a major issue. Not to mention there's not too many of shotgun people, and they're not that tough. Like in Uncharted 1, they always made the shotgun guys the fat people, and those guys take like a lot of bullets before you kill them. In this one, just about anybody can have a shotgun. A scrawny ass guy can kill in like two shots, or even a heavy with big armor can carry a shotgun. Is there still cheap depths in the game? Yeah, quite a few. I'm not going to spoil when, but there is a part of the game where they make the game so difficult. Like, there is difficulty from normal to hard in an instant, and the game becomes a clusterfuck. Quite honestly. It becomes a clusterfuck of problems, and it becomes really, really hard. Anyways, um, that's the shooting aspect. The hand-to-hand -hand aspect... Um, hang on a second, guys. <laughs> My nephew forgot to close the door. Okay, anyways, um, the hand-to-hand -hand combat is vastly improved. It really is vastly improved compared to Uncharted 2. Like, there are moments when the enemy can grab you and you can actually, uh, grab them and toss them around. Like, you can toss them off ledges, you can go in for combo attacks. There are also new finisher attacks and stuff like that, like being able to grab your gun and then smack them in the face with it, which I think is really cool. There's also new hand-to-hand -hand aspects where you fight uh, multiple enemies, almost like in a Batman Arkham City style fighting, which is really fun. I gotta admit that the fighting system in Uncharted 3 was really fun to do, and it was a good idea in most parts. And there were a lot of funny moments too, like they had achievements and stuff like that, like one of them is where you get to smack a guy in the face with a fish. I thought that was real funny and humorous, and I kept towards the Uncharted style. Uncharted is like adventurous, it's very serious, but at moments, it can be fun. Like, it has its funny moments. And that's one of them. Like, it keeps the humor right there, even in a fighting scene. They're able to smack someone right in the face with a fish and KO them with it. It's funny, it really is. I love that moment. Graphics, what can I say? This Uncharted game has unbelievably great graphics. The graphics look so pure and crisp, and the game looks, it almost looks like you're watching a movie. That's what it feels like. Most Uncharted games, you feel like you're watching it instead of playing it sometimes. And a lot of the moments of the game, they make it like movie style. Like in uh, the trailer, you saw Nathan Drake was inside the plane when it was coming apart. That's like a movie style part, and you're still playing the game basically, and it's fun. The fact that they made it movie styled and um, they combined movie style concepts with um, third person shooting, I thought that was really a good idea, and it works really well. The graphics are really great. I think they're at their top right now, and I feel like there's a lot. There's a lot they can do. What else can I say about? Oh yeah. In Uncharted 2, the multiplayer was a little clunky and a little unbalanced, but um, in Uncharted 3, they definitely, definitely made the improvement to um, change the uh, multiplayer into something better. The multiplayer in Uncharted 3 
is definitely more fun than in Uncharted 2. It's more balanced, they have a leveling system, and then you can also choose your own loadout, sort of like how in Call of Duty. You're allowed to choose a primary, a secondary, perks, and a, and a kickback. A kickback is basically when you get enough medals in one game, you're allowed to activate a special ability as like spawning an RPG, being able to run faster, or being able to uh, have multiple grenades, be able to throw a grenade that blows up instantly, being able to throw one grenade that blows up into like five or eight grenades at once, and be like boom, then comes three more, boom, 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 and then three more, boom, 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 boom. Like they have multiple types of kickbacks that apply to many people. The weapons can be upgraded in many ways from having better range, reload speed, more ammo, stuff like that. It's more balanced, it's way more, it's way more balanced, it's not as cheap. They didn't make most of the areas overpowered like the melee. The melee system in Uncharted 2, all you had to do was be like, da-dum, and then punch, dead. In Uncharted 3, you need to go like, da -da 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 -da. you need to put in a good amount of ammo, because in order for you to kill someone, you need like three melee hits. Straight, not two. You know what I mean? So you need to do like a lot of damage. In Uncharted 2, it was like one punch, you do 75% damage. So all I need to do is like shoot them a couple of times, they're dead. In this one, it's like 50% damage. So punch, punch, dead. But in this one, you have to do like, da -da 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 -da, then punch, and they're dead. I'm just checking the camera. 11 minutes. All right, um, that's one thing. The co-op, the co, there's also some certain games like Team Objective is a good idea because it's a collaboration of every single multiplayer game except for Three Team Deathmatch and Hardcore. Oh, and Free For All. Basically, you play games like um, um, Treasure Hunter, um, Team Deathmatch, King of the Hill, Turf War, stuff like that. Where like you play them, and it's a uh, best three out of five game. First team that can make it to uh, five, uh, make it to three rounds, wins. Wins the whole game. The cool thing about the multiplayer is that they also have customizable characters. So even if you buy like, uh, um, let me show you the statuette. Let me get the statuette. So say like you bought right here uh, Desert Drake. You can customize the shirt. He may have special uh, head outfits and stuff like that that you can give to the character later on when you unlock it. And stuff like that. Alright, let me put this back. There's also special weaponry you can unlock. You see, in the multiplayer there are treasures that spawn. When you collect these treasures, you're able to uh, unlock special skins, weaponry, and and costumes for characters. So you can unlock uh, like a special AK-47 that has like three attachments. You can unlock um, a top hat for uh, Drake when he's in his suit and stuff like that. You can unlock like many special costumes for different characters, which I thought was really cool and a good idea. So this way like you can customize your character any way you want, even if you buy an already preset character. You can also make your own hero or villain. It's up to you. You can make your own hero or villain, buy one, or even, uh, yeah, buy one and then customize them, and stuff like that. You can also buy some of this stuff online in the PlayStation Store. So there leaves a lot of customization in the multiplayer. One thing I didn't talk about was this music. The music is unbelievable in Uncharted. It always has been. The music in Uncharted has always had, like, the certain music at certain parts. It's always been good in every Uncharted game. Like, I have not played an Uncharted game where the music hasn't been played perfectly, and there hasn't been perfect moments where the music plays. So, like, at certain times you hear, like, an easy string, like, on a violin or something like that, but then you'll hear these drums, like, you'll hear drums playing, like, boom, 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 like that. Like, playing, like, when you get into a fight, like, they play, like, certain music at certain times, so it'll be, like, a violin string when you're trying to sneak around, everything's calm, then they'll start playing the drums when, uh, you get into combat and stuff like that, and then probably end the drums like in a start to doom to doom like that to uh, let you know that you finished fighting. So um, I say the music's really good. I would love to pick up the Uncharted 3 soundtrack if I get the opportunity. Okay, next thing I need to discuss the co-op story. Quite honestly, the co-op story is a lot of fun. It really is. What they decided to do was bring levels from uh, Uncharted 1 through 3 and bring in enemies from Uncharted 1 through 3 in a sort of mini storyline. Basically, in the mini storyline, you're searching for this item 
which is a statue of Janus, the two-faced god. And well, you run you run in along the way that the one who's leading this excavation is Lazarevich, which is the enemy that you killed in Uncharted 2. I love that. The co-op story is basically like you and a buddy, or you and two buddies, because up to three player, work together to take on the uh, the co-op storyline against multiple enemies on either easy, normal, hard, or crushing. It's all up to you. And basically you go through these objective-based missions where you work with a teammate to uh, survive. You get about 15 lives for you to share. And you beat it when you make it all the way to the end, and you fail if you run out of lives. One thing I like is that they bring back old enemies like Draza from uh, Uncharted 1. They brought back uh, certain like aspects and stuff like that, including certain levels like Borneo. They brought back Borneo from Uncharted 2. They brought back the, uh, the monastery from Uncharted 1. They have the... Uh, the airport, they have Syria, they have the London Underground, those five levels you play in. Playing five levels which last about 20 to 30 minutes, so you're roughly getting about a three hour story. A three to two and a half hour storyline in co-op. So that's fun to play two and a half, three hour storyline with your friends. And the final battle, I can pretty much spoil this one because it's not that big. The final battle has you fighting all three enemy three enemies from all three uncharted. You're fighting Eddie from Uncharted 1, Flynn from Flynn and Lazarvich from Uncharted 2. I wish they had an enemy from Uncharted 3, but Flynn and Lazarvich is from Uncharted 2, and you're fighting them with your three buddies. So it's a three-on-three -three battle, which I thought was really cool. They actually see like this little medieval reunion. Like we all thought, like what would happen if all three of these guys met? What would happen? Like what would happen? And look what happened. They heard our plea and they went with it. 60 minutes, alright. Um, They went with our plea and they, uh, we got it and we got in this epic final battle. It's not really an epic, epic final battle, but it's a fun final battle. We have to take on all three of them. And it's tough because one has a shotgun with a laser sight, one has a sniper rifle with a laser sight, and the other has a freaking desert eagle with a laser sight. It all depends. Jesus Christ, people call me. I got a random and stuff like that. I wish people would understand that I got a busy. Alright guys, I think I've said everything I needed to about Uncharted 3. What can I say? Uncharted 3 is definitely Game of the Year material. It has great music, great graphics, a great storyline, and a great multiplayer. Like, the storyline is something you will not forget. But, in a but in retrospect, the storyline could have been more improved compared to Uncharted 2. Like, the final boss fight was probably one of the most disappointing final bosses I've ever been through. And some of the, uh, like, I wish there were, like, a better final boss fight. Like, I would have loved to take on, uh, I'm not gonna spoil it, but I would have loved to have, like, an epic boss fight. Instead, it's just a, uh, it's pretty mediocre. I hated it. I really didn't like the final boss fight in Uncharted 3. It was too easy. Like, I did it in my first try, the first time I played it. In Uncharted 1 and 2, when I did the final boss, it took me, like, five or six attempts for me to beat it. So, Uncharted 3. Definitely game of the year material. Definitely a fun game to play. Definitely a game to play with your friends and your buddies. The only issue I have with it is the story mode, and you need an online pass. Beyond that, this is still a great game, a great buy. It's only about, like, it's $60 still, but I still think this is worth it, because you're going to get a lot with this game. I'm going to give this game an 8.25. I mean, like, I want to give it an 8.5, but the story didn't appeal to me that much. Like, there were a couple of things, it was lacking some humor. Like, there was a couple of humorous points. It was lacking compared to Uncharted 2 and 1. In Uncharted 2 and 1, it never felt dull. You never felt dull. Like, you never felt like it was a dull moment. In Uncharted 3, there were a couple of moments where I felt like, I think they're overdoing it. Like, the Chateau level. I thought they were overdoing it on that one. They really did, though. And in some levels, they were underdoing it. Like, um, the, uh, the chase scene with Talbot in Yemen. I felt that was underdone. I felt like there could have been more done in that level, but it wasn't done that well. Same with, uh, same with after you rob the uh, museum as mini three. There were a couple of things that were underdone and some things that were overdone. Still, 
give this game an 8.25, pick it up for your PS3, 60 bucks, it is a fun game, you will not regret it. Okay, that's the end of my uh, review. If you have a name that you would like to give my reviewing series, put it down in the comment below. And uh, next time I next time I review a game, if I like the name, I will call it that. So, anyways, this is Key947, aka Wolf King. Make sure I'm clicking the right button. Okay, clicking the right button, and I will catch y'all later at the next view gameplay. And son of a bitch, I wish they'd leave me alone. Anyways. Kina47 aka Wolfgang. I will see you later for the next review. Shit. <laughs> Sorry.